Okay, before I start talking about shaders, I thought I'd give you a bit of a history lesson. Before OpenGL 2, but namely OpenGL 1.5, vertex and fragment shaders didn't exist. There was a so-called fixed pipeline. You would send stuff to OpenGL, it would do what it had to do, and then it would give you the result back. <coughs> so in this fixed functionality pipeline, you can call the API, just like the JMonkey engine, go through some primitive processing, some lighting, rasterizing, fog, and all this other stuff until it gets to the frame buffer. <coughs> this is what depicts what's going to appear on your screen. So your screen will, in essence, keep reading from the frame buffer probably 60 times a second, depending on the screen refresh rate. So if your program with your graphics card isn't refreshing the frame buffer um, more than 60 times a second, you're going to have frames which are going to repeat themselves on your screen, and you're going to have a bad frame rate. So but prior or after OpenGL 1.5 came OpenGL 2, which introduced vertex and fragment shaders. This gave the computer programmer a lot more control at the uh, GPU low level scale. So what happens now is after JMonkey Engine has sent all the mesh data to the graphics card, you can now uh, play around with some of the vertices. And then after your vertex shader has run, it will then be sent to the fragment shader, which is responsible for the pixels that appear on your screen. So then you can start adjusting some of them. And then it goes through the rest of the stuff until it goes back to the frame buffer. So, yeah, so now you've got a lot more control about what you send to the frame buffer, hence what appears on your screen. Um, there's a few other diagrams I can show you. This is on the JMonk Engine website. So this gives you a nice simple diagram. Yeah. Got the JMonk Engine class, sends the mesh data to the vertex shader, computes the world position, and then the I position, and then what appears on your screen and screen space. Oops. Sent to the fragment shader, then the pixel color gets sent to the screen. And to get your object to appear where it should on the screen, it's got to go through a lot of steps. First of all, it's in the object space. So if you imagine you create an object in Blender, for instance, normally it will be like at zero, 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 like in the center of the um uh object space <laughs> if you will and then you might say oh i'm going to move it four units to the right after you've imported it into uh, the jmonkey engine so to get it to there in the, um, the vertex shader you have to times it by the world matrix to get it into i coordinates you've got to times it by the view matrix and to get it to where it's going to appear on the screen, you've got to times it by the projection matrix. Oof, I'll show you all how to do that later. Okay. Oops. What am I doing? Okay, back to the JMonk engine. And I'm going to show you what the unshaded uh, material definition, fragment shader, and vertex shader look like. Okay. To do that, if you go to your project, Click the Libraries um, folder, click the plus icon, and then go to the jme3core.jar, and then go to common.matdefs.misc, and then you should find the unshaded at the very bottom. So I'm going to double click unshaded.j3md, and this is what it looks like. You have some material parameters. These are what you pass in from your JME class. So 
Right, there's a color map, a light map, color, vertex color, separate text cord. You can add a glow map using the glow post processor. And then there's some techniques. You define what GLSL uh, version you're running on. This is one. Then you say where your unshaded uh, vertex and fragment shaders are located. Uh, some world parameters. These are going to be the world view projection matrix, view matrix, normal matrix, world view matrix. There's a few others. Um, you can add some defines, which you can then check. Oh, did the Jamie application supply me a color map? And then you can use this has color map in your shaders. Um, Pre-normal class. Let's just skip that one. And glow. If you've ever used a glow post processor, um, then this just allows the unshaded material definition to be affected by it. And so it has a glow map, glow color. I'm going to open the unshaded vertex shader. There's a, f there's a few different qualifiers you can have in the shaders. You can have uniform, which is user specified ones, or ones that are passed from the JMonkey application that um, only want to be computed once for the whole shader. Uh, there's attributes, which are passed by the engine itself. The mesh data mainly, the normals, the texture coordinates, the vertex positions, tangents, stuff like that. And then there's also varying, which, yeah, there's an example here, which means you're going to pass this um, variable to the fragment shader after you're done with it in the vertex shader. So if you remember those defines earlier, it's going to check if a color map was supplied and if it was then it's going to add another define it's going to say oh I need the texture coordinates give them to me jmonkey application so yeah uh, so basically this line here is you need to have a GL position in every uh, a, a vertex shader it's going to convert the vertices that is given into the world space where it needs to be. Um, and this world view projection matrix will make the object appear where it needs to on the screen for you. It takes an in position which is given to you by the JMon engine application. It's a VEC3 so you need to add in another um, argument here. It, uh, usually you use one that gives you the most consistent results. Um, yeah, that's the vertex shader and then the fragment shader. Um, the main application begins here. It's going to set a color, which is just going to be white. It's going to set all the um, the vector for um, object. It's going to have just one, 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 one for RGBA, red, green, blue, alpha. And then if a color map's been defined, it's going to multiply all those colors by the color map. And if it's got a vertex color, it'll do that. If you've specified a color, it's going to multiply that. And if you have a separate texture coordinate or not for a light map, so it's going to do the same again there, just multiply the colors. And then in the end, you need a GL frag color, which is going to say what this pixel color should be. Okay, I think that's enough of this and now we'll go into creating our own vertex and fragment shader from scratch.